The new relighting tools in Action give users the ability to generate ultra-realistic lighting artifacts in true 3D space. What's cool is that, unlike plugins that layer lighting effects, like lens flares, over the top of rendered scenes, these lighting artifacts actually interact with objects in 3D composites, even in stereoscopic 3D scenes. So let's enter batch and bring an action node out. Just a basic action. If we look under the relighting menu uh, within action now, we can add a light. And we can also add a lens flare object. When we switch to the schematic view, you'll notice that we have a, our light, our lens flare object, and then the various components that comprise the lens flare object by default. If we start to move the light, you can see that we start to see our lens flare applied inside of our basic scene. Here. If we go to the individual components, you can see that we have different options. We could use discs, orbs, caustics. We also have something called a pivot. You can move this widget on screen. You can see I can start to move the position of that, of that pivot option. It also has its own uh, area here where we can move it in Z space. So again, these uh, different uh, artifacts are actually going to be applied in 3D space. Let's have a look at that in the context of uh, a scene where we have 3D text. Let's look at the, uh, the light now. Here's our 3D text. And as we start to move the light around, uh, let's also make the scale of that a bit larger so you can see it a bit better. But as we start to move that light and it's been positioned behind our, our 3D text, you'll see that the objects in front of that light actually occlude the lens flare artifacts. So this starts to create very realistic effects in 3D space. Let's have another look at how it would act with 2D layers. In this case, we've got our 2D layers. Here's our scene. In fact, let's look. We've got mats actually associated with some of these layers. Again, we'll bring our light, start to position our light, and as it goes behind the 2D layers, you can see how it's actually uh, occluding the lighting effect, which is really quite interesting. In fact, if we were to zoom in, get a little bit closer in on this, uh, on this uh, look at our lens flare, you can see that, uh, let's again make the scale a bit larger, there's even an occlusion tab here within the, uh, the below the basics menu where we can start to increase or change the controls of how the, uh, how the occlusion is going to react uh, to the mats in that scene. There's even a, a profile here. So if we add points to the light or to the profile, this will actually create a bit of a flashing effect as we, uh, we start to move our light uh, across uh, that. You see how it's flashing now. So you can really get a lot of control and create very ultra-realistic lighting effects uh, using these, uh, these different uh, lens flare objects. And again, all the different components can be changed and modified and animated. Uh, iris, streaks, glows, all of these different components. Let's take a look at another example, which uh, is around uh, what we call the, uh, the rays object. So just a quick look at how you can create a rays object. This is, again, just a basic uh, action. We will uh, we'll start by adding a light. And now the rays object, if we look in the schematic view, I'm going to take the, the spread of the light and actually uh, adjust that down. Rotate that around so we can see a bit more of what we're doing here. This is actually creating volumetric rays inside of action. Just by making an adjustment to the angle here, you could also, again, change the spread, fall off, and also uh, change the spread here of the rays themselves. And also, if we adjust the fall off, you can get really nice uh, lighting effects this way. Now let's go back to the scene that I pulled out earlier. This has got it a little bit more set up. In our scene, you can see that I've got uh, a rays uh, object attached to a light. And again, you can see the occlusion happening in that scene. And uh, let's go ahead and bring up the schematic view. Looking down on the scene, you can see that uh, here's my light in the background here, behind all the uh, various elements. I can 
uh, quite easily start to uh, to move that pivot. And as I move the pivot forward, you can see that it's going to create the rays glowing all the way around the uh, sil silhouette of the woman. Again, we can adjust the intensity of the light. And uh, as we move uh, another light forward to actually bring some uh, some some luminance to the foreground elements, move that forward in Z. Go back to the original light, start to adjust the intensity back down. You can see that as we move through our scene, how it's really wrapping around our subject in the foreground. So the volumetric rays object is really allowing us to create these really very highly realistic effects. Again, all working in 3D space with our various 2D and 3D layers. Finally, because the, uh, the, the rays object is picking up from the colors of the image itself, in this case I have a uh, just a stained glass image. And again, in the, uh, the top view, I'm going to move my uh, raise uh, object light back, and you'll be able to see, as I move that back behind the, uh, the surface of our stained glass window, how the, uh, the various colors of the stained glass are actually going to come through that surface to create our, our rays effect. Let's bring the intensity of that light down a bit more, so we can really control that look. That's looking quite interesting. And again, because of the, uh, the possibility of occluding, we're going to bring in just a, a very simple statue here. And you can see as I move the statue up and down and through those rays, it's actually going to create quite an interesting effect again. Again, let's uh, sort of zoom in a bit more on this. Let's move the, um, the statue forward in Z space. You can see, again, it works in 3D space. And of course, if I start to, uh, to zoom in, orbit the camera around, you can see that that lighting effect is going to work around anything that's in front of uh, those rays. You can now create realistic glints, glares, lens flares, and edge effects that mimic real-world lighting artifacts in true 3D space. And because it's all in flame, you can count on the fast and interactive finishing workflow your clients expect.